Mm. Back in the day, <laughs> when we first started, we go on tour. I used to, when we go, first when we go overseas, I would say that it's NBA. It was music by Africans. <laughs> That's what I used to always say. You know, I used to leave it at that. Because uh, there was a time during the 60s where everything was just called race music. No matter if you were singing a church song or singing a song about your last bottle of wine, it was under race music. So I would just say NBA because, you know, they said, are you a jazz group? Because you got the upright bass, Fender Rose, and drum kit. Okay, that's jazz. You know he's rapping, so is that rap music? Or but if you're playing a song, because in hip hop, you, we dig in the crates. So any kind of song could have been used and sampled for a hip hop thing. Whether it's Wu-Tang taking the soundtrack from a Chinese karate flick, you know, to um, just from old things that you've never even heard before, and somebody just grabs a snippet, or just takes the sound of a snare and makes it into a whole nother sound. So I would just say a general term, because people use those terms just to categorize, just so they can market and sell things. So if you're too, you know, if you're too broad, then we can't use you. You can't be a jack of all trades. We can't use you. Might, I know you're good at this and good at that and good at that, but you're gonna have to, you know, just not say you're good at everything. You can't, you can't be an E-man, like Jimmy Cassidy used to say. You know, but now with the roots thing in this hip hop music, hip hop is not a sound anymore. Hip hop can be anything, because anybody can rap, and you can rap to any kind of musical landscape. It could be any kind of instrumentation. It could be people rapping without having a drum beat. You know, the pulse can be from some other kind of source. You know, so it's, I think it's sort of pigeonholed at this point. You know, I want to speak to that, which is, which is all well said. And um, I can always like, uh, just like do a series interview or whatever, people trying to really, I always like to start off by telling people I come from like this jazz background because Max Roach was my godfather. And so him and my dad grew up together as teenagers and so all that was played around me and the stories my dad and his friends shared were all these, you know, really legendary bebop, Max Roach, Miles Davis, you know, and that whole thing. So here I develop as this young kid that gets connected with this whole culture, fascinated by it, listening to it, trying to just constantly understand it as it's growing all around me. And which Max, by the way, was a really big supporter of. And uh, I remember this conversation Max used to talk about that Duke Ellington used to tell him how he used to say, Max, you know, don't let them name you. Meaning, when the name Bebop was given, typically these names, I think one of the things about hip hop is one of the first, I think, genres of music culture that was pretty much de defined by the people within, as opposed to previous generations didn't have black folks in positions of uh, power in newspapers and the media that could define, not that those defining it were wrong, but it's just this uh, thing where it wasn't like the musicians came up with the name. So, I remember Max telling me that how, and if you think about Duke Ellington, it's really hard to define what type of musician he was because he played everything from classical to blues to ballads, and he worked with different musicians from different eras. So he defied categorization when you really look at it, and like he said, is correct. Oftentimes, these names in the period when records were sold in stores. It was a convenient way to place the record so they could be sold, which is a good thing and a bad thing, because now the bad thing is, um, well, when does it stop? Like, if you look at rock and roll, there was this incredible period from when black people laid the foundation to when you have the, the you know, the Rolling Stones and Beatles and this whole incredible raw, wild energy. And then it turns into uh, other things down the line. So you have these debates where some people say, well, that's not really rock. Well, that's you know not really hip hop because you know so it's a good and a bad thing to that. Um. <laughs> you know, I think that hip hop is a universal term. You know, like Ben Bada always said. You know, it was never. I mean, we have these tenets that we've agreed upon. Like it was very much about self defining like Freddie said. So you have these five tenets, and people are four six, right? Um, and, and, and everything, I mean, it's not like the roots isn't hip hop. Of course they're hip hop. 
Um, and then they're the best of hip hop, and then they're a way of opening hip hop up. But hip hop is always constantly deciding what it wants to be in any given moment, you know? So I understand that, that reaction of not wanting to be pigeonholed. Um, and, and I love what Hub said, obviously, about MBAs. Um, because in the end, yeah, I mean, you were talking about Ellington, I was thinking about Aretha, you know? Mm -hmm. She can stand in for variety, she can do blues, she can scat. Um, so it's, you know, and, and, and we all personally have that, you know, we're walking around with these, you know, sentient beings with all these different, you know, you, parts of ourselves. None of us is sitting around just saying that we're one thing, right? Um, and so we wouldn't ask that of our musicians. But I still, you know, I don't want you all to graduate from hip hop. I, we need y'all to still be hip hop. We need the girls <laughs> because you're the very best of hip hop, and often they're the ambassadors of hip hop. You know, back to that touring thing. Um, you know, hip hop opened back up. Obviously, there were some very successful tours uh, that reopened up the the big touring. But the Roots was the, you know, that band that was always, you know, they're like the Grateful Dead, you know, before they got, before Rich put them on um, nighttime television or whatever, um, that, you know, to sit them down because they had families and all that, um, they were touring. Like, y'all were touring like two, two, 150 days a year, right? That was what they used to put in the press, yes. <laughs> so you're saying it's more than that? You're saying it's more than that? No, no, we were, we were going all the time. Yeah, yeah. all the time. <laughs> Um, and to all the like corners of the globe, and you know, so in that sense, you really were ambassadors um, to hip hop. And then I guess I, I keep being the one to bring up Tariq, you know, he's one of our best MCs. Mm -hmm. so. You know, I'd just like to add um, a good buddy of mine that I worked with for a really long time, a brother named Jack Benson, that was one of the producers of my show, Young TV Raps, and he's a very accomplished producer across the board. And, MTV networks, he's produced everything. So, he's Jack in particular, I want to point out, I was chatting with him a little while ago before I came over here, that had the idea when Jay-Z was doing Unplugged to, to get the roots as the band, and which Jay-Z had never worked with a band. And that worked at the point that uh, Hub mentioned a little earlier, that worked so well, Jay-Z was so blown away that he then began to work with bands ever since. So that was the beginning of that in a sense, because that unplug was wildly um, successful, which I thought was really, uh, really an amazing thing. All right. Um